Now, in this module, we'll talk about the major components of the enterprise IT network, and we'll talk about them a little bit more specifically than we did in the last module. So the edge router, what does it do? It has wide area network interfaces. It may be MPLS, it may be internet, it may be any other type of technology which is used on the wide area network. Uh, for example, there could be fiber optic interfaces. It does edge filtering because it's the, it's the first device connecting to the outside world, and it would have access lists. And then there are some RFCs um, which are available, which specify how security should be implemented on an edge device. And it would implement other edge security functions, for example, DDoS protection, a distributed denial of service attacks. The first device which is hit in the organization is the, is the edge router. Then you have the next generation firewall. And the, the next generation firewall performs some very important functions, which are you know, and would be capable of prevention of APT attacks, which is advanced persistent threat attacks, uh, preventing malware, which is, and it would do filtering. It would implement web security, email uh, security, and application bandwidth filtering. So it categorizes all the application flows, and then you are able to control how much bandwidth and how much speed and how much latency you want to bring to each particular application. And the next generation firewall now has become synonymous or is the same uh, type of functionality which is used also in a UTM or a unified threat management device. Now, this is a, another view of the same diagram in which we said that this is the enterprise IT network architecture. And if you have another look, uh, just as a, as a reminder, you know, we have the router, the firewall, switch, data center switch, access switch, and then eventually the UTM, and then you have various security tools and devices. Coming to the DMZ, um, the DMZ, the placement we have already seen, the DMZ is connected to the edge firewall, and the demilitarized zone is neither fully inside, neither fully outside, but is a zone in which we would place devices, um, for example, web servers, which are going to talk and communicate a lot with the outside world, and we configure the security policies accordingly. So the security zone uh, is the DMZ with placement of the published web servers and portals, the web and email security gateway devices, and the application security gateway or the application security firewall, which is also called the web application firewall or WAF, W-A-F. The IPS is a very important device for intrusion prevention system, um, which conducts signature-based uh, stoppage or blockage of attacks at the network layer when, when the traffic is coming into the organization. And this may be a feature, by the way, the IPS intrusion prevention system may be a feature inside the next generation firewall itself. It may be a, mo a module or a, um, a card uh, within the next generation firewall, and it may be separate also. The distribution switch provides connectivity to access switches, to the external exit points, and to the data center switch and it forms the distribution switch is really the connectivity hub which connects all the other uh, main devices together. And then you have the data center switch um, which performs a very important function. It must have an integrated firewall which would perform data center filtering to prevent malware and it does that with the help of access lists. And, it, and the next generation firewall functionality which we saw at the edge could also be implemented in the data center firewall within that. You have the access switch for user connectivity. It implements switch port security at the access layer, and that's a, that's a field, and, and you can study the switch port and the access layer security, which is implemented in the layer two and layer three switches. You have the network admission control device, which performs network admission control and, and would make sure that devices who want to access the network or want permission to access the network they actually comply to a policy, and the network admission control would check, for example, if the antivirus on a computer is up to date, and then it would allow it to access the, uh, the, net the network. And if it doesn't comply to a policy, it would quarantine it and not allow it access. As per IEEE 802.1x, and you can look this up on the net. Uh, then there's a security information and event management, or CM solution, which is a logging and monitoring dashboard, and it provides 
um, root cause analysis, event correlation, event management, for example. You have a vulnerability manager, which provides the vulnerability scanning. You have a system antivirus, which provides the, um, the antivirus functionality uh, to prevent malware on the systems. You have a host intrusion prevention system, which provides IPS type functionality on the servers. And a UTM we have already talked about. It's uh, like a single pizza box. Uh, and it provides all the security functionalities like email security, web security, uh, firewall functionality, IPS uh, in one device. And uh, the next generation firewall or UTM nowadays is considered the same. And then finally, you have mobile device management, MDM solution um, implemented inside the organization for mobile devices. And then other security tools like two-factor authentication, the DLP solution, for example. Thank you.